Hey everybody, it's Punch here, and I wanted to talk about Voice Meter Banana and some new functionality within Voice Meter Banana that I think a lot of people will be happy about. And it'll help a lot of people that have a PC and a streaming rig, a dual you know PC setup. And this is going to give you a solution, you know, to use Voice Meter Banana, and it'll replace or keep you from buying some expensive hardware where you go and you know pay eighty, hundred dollars for a mixer. And, you know, you pay an additional, you know, $50, or whatever for cabling and all that to get all of your audio connections together that you need for your stream rig. And I want to go through my configuration real quick and then talk about V-Band. Okay, this is something that's going to be very helpful for you uh, for setting your uh, stream rig up. So let me go ahead and show you what I have done and how I have used V-Band. So I have my microphone, my Blue Snowball, going into my hardware input number one. Okay, and as you can see, I have it patched to the B2 output. Okay, B2 output is what I'm using to send to my stream rig through V-Band. Now, when I, I'll show you what V-Band is here in a second. Likewise, I'm also using a cable, a virtual audio cable that comes packaged with Voice Meter Banana when you uh, download it uh, from the website from vbaudio.com. And this cable, you know, Windows looks at it as a physical input a physical device so you can use this cable to uh, output from say TeamSpeak or Discord something like that and that's what I'm using for here this is going this is my uh, communication software and I have it going to both A1 uh, which is up here and that is my sound card so I can hear people talking to me and also having it going to A2 A2 is my uh, HDMI out of my game rig going to my Elgato HD60 Pro capture card that's in my stream rig okay so that's how i get comms off you know, the comms to my stream rig so that people can also hear you know the guys i'm talking to while they're viewing my stream okay now i was using hardware input three to feed uh twitch alert audio back from my stream rig to my game rig but there was problems with that and the, it was easy, okay, because it was a simple just plug in uh, an analog line from the uh, play the speaker out of a stream rig into the line in in my uh, computer or my game rig. Okay, so that was easy, but the problem was there was a lot of noise in the line because of ground problems, you know, and I've noticed that a lot with uh, onboard audio, and that's what I was using. I was using the line in on my onboard audio to uh, get that sound, so... You know, it kind of drove me crazy. So I have now started using V-Band, which I will show you here in a second. Uh, that's what I'm using now for my alerts coming back from my stream rig to my game rig. Okay, virtual input. Okay, the voice meter VAIO. This is where my game audio comes in. Okay, and like I said, I have that patched to my headphones in A1 going out to my Elgato capture card in A2. And then again, I have it patched to B1, which is the uh primary virtual output for voice meter that is so i can record shadow play on my game rig if i have one of those moments i can have audio that goes along with it and also using the aux voice meter aux uh to my sound card and this is stuff like if i wanted to have another piece of software where i could choose you know outputs like uh this in Skype, you know, TeamSpeak stuff does that. Uh, so that that's uh, my basic setup. Okay, you can see my B2, the, the uh, level indicator going up and down as I'm talking. That gives you an idea that, you know, your audio is patching to that channel properly. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to show you V-Band and how that is set up. So if you go here and you click on V-Band, you'll notice my V-Band is on. Likewise, the V-band indicator at the top here is highlighted in blue. Okay, so I have two incoming streams, four outgoing streams. Okay, now what this does is V-band allows you to stream audio over your internal Ethernet network. And it's really nice because now instead of having to deal with a bunch of cables and a big mess behind your desk, you can use your, ex you know, your existing network to stream audio to and from your game rig and your uh, stream rig. So what I have done, as I told you before, my mic is going to the B2 output. And here I have my outgoing stream for the bus B2. And I've named my, my stream name Mike. 
and this is the IP address of my stream rig. This is where it's going to. Now, a couple things of note. First, you make sure that your stream name on your uh, gaming rig and your streaming rig are exactly the same. Also, you'll know that it's working when you have your button pressed on and you get a green light there. That means your handshake is good from both sides. It means that they're talking to each other. Okay. Likewise, on the incoming, okay, I have alerts set. Okay. Alerts is the stream name. It is on. I have a handshake light that is green. And the IP address, which is here, the dot one one zero is from my streaming rig. Okay. Now, a couple things of note. You can set sample rate on your outgoing there to whatever, and you can see the standard numbers, the 44, 100, 48,000 hertz, all the way up to 96,000 hertz. Now, I have mine set to 44, 100, and, you know, that was the default. I just kept it that way. Everything's happy. Okay, so, so now what I want to show you is net quality, and this is something that you're going to have to play over around with because your individual uh, networks are different, okay? So some are faster, some are slower. So you're going to have to play around with these settings to try to minimize these errors, and I'll show you what they look like, and you'll see these errors come up here, and uh, this is what you're trying to avoid. So anything red, your handshake is red there, you need to play with these net quality settings and try to get to green with uh, no errors showing up over here or as minimal errors as possible because it's going to affect your uh, audio. You're going to get clicking and pauses and stuff like that. So that's good. Now another thing you need to have is you need to have V-Band on both sides. So what I have done, and I'll show you here, is that I have Voice of Ender Banana on both PCs. So let me show you. I have... Uh, V-Band here on the stream rigs voice meter banana and I have Mike going in or Mike incoming uh, from my gaming rig that is dot one zero five I'm getting the green handshake which is good and my net quality is fast I don't have any errors coming in likewise on the outgoing I have alerts going to my game rig dot one zero five and again I have the green light so that tells you everything's good and I have net quality set here to optimal which is what you're really trying to achieve. Uh, but like I said, you have to play with these settings to figure out what the best settings are for you to minimize your errors. So now let me show you how the alerts work. Okay, first of all, you want to make sure that your default playback, okay, we bring this up, and make sure that your default playback is set to your virtual number one, which is your voice meter VAIO, okay? And uh, so you have your default set to that, Okay, so now when you bring up your Twitch alerts, I'm going to go ahead and type that in, Twitch alerts. I'll bring this up. I'll bring my, my UI up for this, and I should be able to go to my alert box, and I should be able to test the follow alert. Okay, so there's my follow alert. And as you can see, get rid of that. You can see it coming in now through uh, my A1 there. And that is what's feeding to my headphones. So it works really good. That's how the alerts works coming through your V-band. And it, as you see, there was no errors. It was clean. It was nice. There was no background noise. All that good stuff. And... You know, so that was a really nice solution for me to get rid of that unwanted noise that I wanted in my stream because I'm trying to make the audio as quality, as high fidelity as possible for my viewers. So that's really voice meter in a nutshell. Um, it's really easy to use. I recommend everybody going and giving it a shot and, uh, you know, letting, uh, letting yourself go out there and see what you can do with this because it really is, in my opinion, an all-in-one solution for dual streaming with a gaming rig and a streaming rig. So go out there and give it a shot. If you have any questions about it and you can't get it to work, feel free to comment down below. I'll try to answer uh, as best as I can. I'll try to get you set up. Um, it's actually pretty easy to set up. Just remember the key things. IP addresses need to match and your stream names need to match identically between both your streaming rig and your gaming rig for this to work properly. And then go in and adjust your net settings to minimize the errors that you have. That's the three key things you need to remember.
All right, guys, that is it. I hope you have a great week. I hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend. Thanks for watching the video. Give me a like if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. I do have more OBS tutorials and voice meter banana tutorials and, and tips coming out here soon. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great week. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.